If you don't congregate in the coffee shop, in the foyer, if you want to say hello to someone, you go into the car park near your car, and near your car, and you do whatever you have to do. Please, again, I'm repeating, don't congregate in the coffee shop or in this area. Go straight to your car, and after that, you do what you have to do. So God bless you. I pray that you will enjoy the service. We don't have a full scale service uh, today. Next week, uh, the praise and worship team will meet today and during the course of the week, and we have a full praise and worship. God bless you. Enjoy the service. Enjoy leaving the presence of God. We love you. We are praying for you daily. Anything on this stuff? Oh, okay. Let's give Pastor a hand.
alive in homes and in hospitals. Lord Jesus, this morning, you know each one by their name. You know each one by their pain. You know each one that is going to have operations done. You know, Lord, each one that have already had operations done. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, there is so much of anxiety when people are going into hospitals. But Lord Jesus, we thank you and we plead your blood covering over each one of our family members. Oh God, at this time, we pray, Lord, for many lives that has been lost. We pray for many families that are still mourning the loss of their loved ones. Heavenly Father, the peace that passes all human understanding is the peace that I pray for each one this morning, Allah. And now, Lord Jesus, as we, as a family of God, have come together now to worship you on the way forward. We pray, Lord, that you plant an edge of covering over each one of us, Lord, that we covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, that no virus formed against us shall prosper. Lord Jesus, yes, we talk about masks, we talk about social distancing, but there is one name that is above all other names this morning that will protect us, O God, and that is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, Lord, that your presence, that your sweet, holy presence dwell amongst each one of us as we continue to worship you now. In the name of an almighty God, I ask all of this. Amen. A very, very good morning to every one of you. Would you just stand? Would you give the Lord some praise? Would you give him some honor? Would you come together to worship and to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? And the year of all of them has given him some glory, giving him some praise, giving him some glory, worship for his worthy. Come and ask his spirit and take notes to what you've got. Give him a praise in today. Give him a lift up his name in our every circumstance. As we stand, we're going to play this beautiful song, Oceans. And I want you to listen to the words, Spirit, lead me where you were. We're going to have our praise and worship next to it. We couldn't this week because of practical reasons, but we're going to transition into a full service. But we are here to worship God. Let's not forget that. We are here to give Him glory. In the course of this time, I'm going to remove my mask because I'm quite a distance away. We, we arranged that because it's very difficult for to speak with it. So we have arranged it. Um, we're going to sing this chorus together. And I want to say to you that we lost Althea Norton during the time of COVID. We couldn't even do a funeral. And we had people that had operations during this time. Some of them had parts of their bodies, digits removed due to illness and so on. So therefore we thank God for that wonderful prayer because all we have is Jesus. I'm sure that you realized in this time, the last time we were here was the 15th of March and Pastor William Kalsa was here. Little did we realize that when we walk out of this door, it would be eight months before we come back. And so I want to thank God for you. I just want to Jesus coming again. I want to tell you that the world 
always talk about a reset. But we as children of the Most High God know that the reset is going to be the rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ. And get your hearts ready. Get your minds ready. Get, every, get everything together. You know, in this time I realize the church is not a body. Church is here in our hearts. And so as we listen to this chorus together, Spirit lead me. And let the Spirit of God lead us. Look, I don't know what my next step is going to be. You don't know what your next step is going to be. But one thing we know is who holds our future. Hallelujah. If ever you praise God, I want you to praise Him this morning. I want you to give Him glory and honor this morning. There are so many weddings that we put off. We even did, did, did funerals during this time. We've done weddings during this time. I tell you a little joke also. We did a christening and we didn't tell our children because they said you're not going anywhere. And so we did this christening and the family is there at the back. Julie and Sadie, we did their Amisha and Jerome. And then we had our masks on and we dedicated the baby. And then they took photographs and they put it on Facebook. <laughs> and lo and behold, our children caught us out. So, those tough times, difficult times, but we have to give glory to God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praises and glory and honor for 
you are worthy, you are worthy. Come and church, we waited eight months to come together to worship him, to praise him, to glorify him. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Over every disease, over every 
big problem over any situation. You are paying off living waters church. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody give God glory. Husbands and wives, because I know it's eight months that you didn't have a chance to elbow her. So, won't you give somebody an elbow? Marie, so good to see you. Turn and tend them, my friend. God bless you. Wonderful to see every one of you. You may take your seats. It's such a joy to be here this morning. And uh, we promise our service is not going to be long. And as we go on, we're going to transition into a full service. But pray for South Africa. The numbers are increasing dramatically in the last two or three days. We've seen the numbers going to 3,000, but who cares? Whatever happens, we know that we are going to be with Jesus shortly. And so the blessed hope that we have takes away the depression that we should be having. Now we move away from that because we serve an Almighty God. Amen? Come on, somebody, just put a smile on your face. I want to speak to you for a few moments on in his presence. And uh, I noticed a lot was going on during this lockdown where people kept saying that the church is not the place where the presence of God is, and that's absolutely true. So, where is the presence of God then? And we're going to look into the Word of God and find where the presence of God is and where we should be in order to access the joy that comes from being in the presence of God. Now, you know, Cynthia said this is the new normal. And uh, I don't know, you don't know, nobody seems to know what is going on. But one thing I want to tell you, that God has never abdicated the throne in favor of anybody. Now to all our people that are at home, very good morning to you and God bless you. I know you can see the blue screen, but there's a beautiful lot of people in front of us which you can't see. But well, welcome and God bless you. A lot of our people are watching on live stream and thank church for making that possible. So we thank the Lord that we are all here to give you glory and praise. Amen. And you've got to smile more. You can smile with your eyes and your mask on. The Bible says in Psalm 122 verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And one thing I can say to you, the many people that responded and said, we are so excited. Even Maria, remember, sent me a message, I am so excited to be in the house of God. Why are we excited? Because it is here that we can corporately worship and praise Him. This morning when you woke up, I know that your heart was not the same as it was every Sunday. There was something different about it. There was this feeling that we have the opportunity of going into the house of God. Psalm 16 verse 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life, the psalmist says. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Where is the joy? The psalmist makes it very clear. He says, in thy presence is fullness of joy. You know, there's a deep spiritual hunger amongst every single one of us to be happy. I don't know about you. It's been a tough, tough eight months. I, I struggled on so many occasions to lift my spirits. And that's the honest truth. You can't say you're a pastor, you're supposed to be happy all the time. It doesn't work that way. Essentially, we are all human and we all are subject to the emotions of life, the challenges that face us. It was a tough, tough, tough time. But you know who sustained us through it all and who made us go one step at a time? Jesus. And you know, you remember the song so clearly, one step at a time, please, Jesus. One step, one day at a time. 
I woke up every morning for eight months and I said, Lord, I thank you, not for riches, not for car, not for a house. I said, thank you that I have the breath of life to breathe. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not in hospital with COVID-19. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not in an accident because so many of us went through that. How we should thank God that God has brought us safe thus far. Somebody say hallelujah. God has brought us safe thus far. We search for happiness everywhere, but we don't find it. We think we will get it if we go for an overseas holiday. It doesn't happen. We think we will get it when we fall in love with somebody that we've loved our whole lives. It doesn't happen. The only time you will know joy is when you are in the presence of an almighty God. You see, the environment of every believer, the ecosystem of every believer is in the presence of God. I spoke once about fish. A fish is it's a, a, in its environment, its ecological environment when it is in the water. Now there's oxygen in the water and there's oxygen on land, but the fish cannot access that oxygen on land, it has to get it in water. It's the same with you and I, the believer. We cannot access joy except we, if we are in the presence of God. That's our ecosystem. We've got to be in the presence of an almighty God. You're not going to find joy anywhere else but in the presence of an almighty God. Do you know, in all tribes all over the world, there is this urge to worship. But the problem is they worship something or somebody and not the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The difference with you and I as believers is that we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want to tell you something this morning. If you look what's happening at the American elections right now, and I'm not advocating for anybody, I'm not in politics. That's my personal opinion, what I believe. But right now, the world is standing on the precipice of good and evil. And we are standing at a point where the entire free world will be affected. What am I saying? All systems are converging, and this convergence has never happened in history. What is it telling us? Jesus is about to return to claim his bride. You and I should not be wearing masks. You and I should not be having our little children wearing masks, not being able to hug each other, not being able to kiss each other, not being able to say, I love you face to face. This is not what God wants for us. And therefore, I believe that very soon that God is going to send his son and go and say to them, fetch my bride. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. Go and fetch my bride. We will do what the government wants us to do. We will comply with every rule and every regulation. But let me tell you, the government shall be upon his shoulders. Hallelujah. And when he sits on the throne, I promise you, it will be free for us all. How we wait for that day when there will be no masks, when there will be no sanitizer. My little grandson of one and a half, you know, they just brought up now with this new norm. He goes to the sanitizing station yesterday, he stands there, he tries to press that pedal, he puts his hand up, and he wants to sanitize his hand. How we wait for that day when it will all be gone? I have news for you, man. It's going to be a short while. Very soon we will be with the King. You want to be in the presence of God and you want joy? Stay with Jesus. Live with Him. His presence reveals our secret sins. Adam and Eve lost their joy because they lost the presence of God. The psalmist says in Psalm 19 verses 1 to 10, I'm just going to read a line to you. Lord, you have been our dwelling place. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. You see, when you come into the presence of God, your sins become very, very clear. Because the presence of God highlights who we are. And let me tell you something. I said to God this week, don't look at my sin, but look at the blood of your son that covers me. Because there's not one of us that's righteous. There's not one of us that can say, 
I have no sin. We all are sinful, and we, every single one of us needs the blood of Jesus to wash us. Amen. And so the psalmist says, You are our dwelling place, and when I am in your presence, my iniquities come to the fore. The apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 59, he says, I am the least of the apostles. And then Ephesians 3 8, as he gets closer to the presence of God, he says, less than the least of all God's people, he says of himself. And then in 1 Timothy 1 16, he says, I am the worst of all sinners. You see, when you get into the presence of God, our righteousness is slowly peeled off like onion. We take it all off because all our righteousnesses, the Bible says, are as filthy rags. That's it. It is, it is worse than the worst when we get into the presence of God. But God does not look upon you as a human being. He looks at the substitute who is Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross of Calvary so that you and I could be saved and saved for all of eternity. Somebody say amen. That's Paul. He says I'm worse than everybody. His presence comes through the power of the Holy Spirit. He gives us power to go in both our words and our actions. God is present among his people through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. The Holy Spirit must be respected. When you come into the presence of God and the Holy Spirit is within you, there must be a great reverence. There must be a fear. There must be a, a feeling of holiness. You know what the psalmist says? The Lord has blessed his household because of everything he had. And he was speaking of Obedidim. Why? Because the Ark of the Covenant was taken there. And when David saw that this household was so blessed because the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of God, which was in the house of Obedidim, and that house was blessed, David said, I want the Ark back. You see, when you walk away from God, you will want the presence of God very, very quickly. It's like that fish that's out of water. It will flap around for a while. It will try to breathe for a while, but eventually it will die. And so it is with you and I. If we don't have the presence of God in our lives, we will flap around for a little while. We'll try to breathe for a little while, but you will die spiritually if, uh, if you are away or out of the presence of God. Amen. You're so used to sitting quietly behind your television screen and watching. You forgot to say amen. Just, just lighten up a little bit, ease up a little bit. It's going to be okay. It's all going to be fine. Okay, stay in the presence of God. Don't ever give up the presence of God. You know, there's something that is missing in the church today. And that something is joy. We don't have joy anymore. It's so difficult to be a Christian. We think that the pleasures of this world are better than what God can give us. Do you know that joy is not an emotion? Joy is not dependent on you being happy because you got a better job or you bought a brand new car, you can be happy for a while, but after you drive that car for a while, it's just like another car. So that's temporary. You can be sad if you lose your pet, you can be sad. So those are emotions, but joy is a state of being. In spite of your circumstances, you should be full of joy. Amen? Now I know that message is for myself. I mean, you know, my greatest critic is sitting behind me. Right? Greatest critic. And she tells me, you are never happy. So today, this message is for me too. I want to try to be happy too. Because the joy of the Lord, the psalmist says, is my strength. Hallelujah. We need to be happy. Don't be caught up with everything that's going on. You know, it's like this. You go into a restaurant and you say to the restaurant, they say, uh, for example, you can have a whipped breakfast as an example, but if you add on a sausage, it's maybe 10 grams. But you go there and you stand home and you say, listen, I'll have only the extra, I'll have the sausage for 10 grams. And they say to you, know what you can't have, that you've got to have the breakfast and add on the extra. Many of us as Christians, we want to add on the extra without the main meal, and that's knowing Jesus. You've got to 
you got to know him. And if you know him, the added extra is the blessings that come with it. You can't go there and say, give me that sausage, but really don't order the breakfast. That's what we do. We go and we order the extra lot, but God wants you to have the main meal. What is the main meal? Is you come before him with a repentant heart, crying before him, forgive me, Lord. I have sinned. I repent before you. I love you, Jesus. And you know what? When you do that, the extras come on automatically. One of the extras is the joy of the Lord. Put a smile on your face through your eyes over here. Unfortunately, that James Bond, uh, James Bond nearly died. You know, brother, go before your eyes only. He would have been so happy. If, uh, you know. Galatians 4.14 Paul asked, what happened to your joy? If you don't have any joy, then there's something that's wrong. Paul asked, what happened to your joy? Have you ever seen Christians walking around like the world is on their shoulders? Yet yeah, Jesus took the world away from you. He says, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. He's taken it away, cast all your cares upon him, for he cared for you, he loves you. He loves you more than you would ever imagine. I know, you know, I was thinking, some of you think that you're dreaming you in church this morning. I get that feeling, you know. When I look around, it's like, okay, we're dreaming we're in church. I'm going to wake up just now. And you're going to be live streaming. It's not going to happen. You hear in church, elbow somebody and say hello. Some of you say, I have the joy of the Lord, but I don't like to let it out. Psalm 511, God wants us to rejoice. He wants us to shout for joy. He wants us to be joyful in Him. In Notice it says that God wants us to shout for joy, not whisper for joy. You can't look at somebody. You cannot be happy that way. You know, when you were children and I was a child, I remember we'd stand there and we'd be there with our different houses in our school and we'd say, Oh, go, go, tag of war, go, go. But in the house of God, I'm happy today. God says, Shout for joy. Be full of the glory of God. Some people say, I can't leave and shout and jump and praise God. It's all on the inside. But I'm going to tell you, it's time you got it out. Hallelujah. You must be full of the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Listen, if you continuously speak positively, if you continuously say, I'm happy, if you continuously say, I'm full of the joy of the Lord, guess what? Your words will cause it to happen that the state of depression will leave and you will be full of the joy of the Lord. Somebody say, Amen. You need to be happy. You need to be full of the... Where's Sandila? I need to song Sandila. Where's he? Sandila, you know, he sent a message on Facebook uh, on our live streaming and he said that pastor your jokes some of them are good but most of them are dry <laughs> so now I'm not going to even try to see a joke because of Sandile I'll get it you know the psalmist says he has exceeding joy you know some people might say I'm not really interested in all of that stuff some of you might say, I'm just happy to serve Jesus. No! God wants you to be happy. And where will you be happy? You will be happy in the presence of God Almighty. Job 8.21 says, now this book talks about trials and storms and difficulty and death and whatever. But do you know that joy is mentioned five times in the book of Job? Joy is mentioned, and I said to you, joy is not an emotion. It is beyond an emotion. It is a state of being. Isaiah 9, 3, it says, God's people rejoice according to the joy of the harvest. When we see people get saved and give their lives to Jesus, that's joy. When we came into the car park today and we saw the cars that were already here by 20 past 8, what joy it was. Our hearts leapt with joy. When people come and say, I want to give my heart to Jesus, what joy it is that another soul is saved. The wells of salvation must give us joy. Matthew 25, 21. Enter into the joy of the Lord, the Bible says. Not come into 
heaven, enter into the joy of the Christian. You know, you, you, you always and I always we look at everything else and say, you know what, we wish we could have a party and dance and sing, but the following morning, you wake up with a heavy headache, things don't work out the same way, but when you are in the presence of God, that joy stays with you forever. Come on somebody, I want you to be full of the joy of the Lord. I want you to be happy. I want you to carry around a positive approach to everything that's going on. Don't join the masses and say, it's all bad, it's not all bad. If you agree that it's all bad, that you deny, you deny the power of Jesus Christ. Do you agree with me? We must tell the world we have a blessed hope in Christ Jesus. I'm doing okay so far. You're happy. Okay. <laughs> Psalm 1611. In your presence is fullness of joy. Not anywhere else. Only in the presence of God is fullness of joy. Joy is a gift that God gives to you and I. You choose the pathway of your life. You know what the psalmist says? You will show me the path of life. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Life more abundantly. You think the way of life. Great joy, exceeding joy, unspeakable joy is what the Bible speaks about. I want to ask you, what are you going through? How difficult is your circumstance today? Are you being challenged today with the various situations and circumstances that you are facing? Or do you have the joy of the Lord? It's my company. You know you're lucky me in the past. You know I can't see you. I don't I want to tell a joke, but I'm right from something. Yeah. No, 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 I don't want to tell this joke. There's it there. I'm waiting for you, Sonia. <laughs> See, Ravi is saying he laughed. I knew he laughed for nothing. Just to make me happy. <laughs> the Bible says in Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 19, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways and to keep his commandments. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Hallelujah. And choose life more abundantly. John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you, that you, your joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. You know, to see God and Kay Stone sitting in church this morning it was such a blessing to my heart. They are not young, they've served many, many years. They could have said, you know what, I don't want to be in church and uh, I'm so ill and whatever. But he's here this morning. Stand, we want to acknowledge you. <laughs> God bless you for the many years that you've served. You've chosen your path of life and you've chosen life. God bless you. You may take your seats. We also have Juliet here. She lost her mom during this time. We also acknowledge that. We thank the Lord that you are here this morning. You see, the devil tries everything to steal our joy. He's a joy stealer. But you know why you, you allow the devil to steal your joy when you sin? Yeah? Sin causes our joy to evaporate. Because the Bible says, Psalm is speaking, when I refused to confess my sin, I was weak and miserable. And I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy upon me. That's, that's what the psalmist said. He says, when I didn't tell you of my sin, I was miserable. But watch what he says later in verse 5. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide them. I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord. And David confesses his son, and the joy returned. Hallelujah. If you want to be in the presence of God, confess your sin, and the joy of the Lord will be your strength. 
What else will steal your joy and resolve conflict? You have a problem with somebody, you haven't spoken to them, you have unforgiveness in your heart, you carry bitterness. You are not going to have the joy of the Lord. You've got to let it all go. Pursue peace with all people, the Bible says, and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Today you say, I choose to forgive. Now think about your worst enemy. Think about the person right now and say, I choose to forgive and immediately you just feel so light. It's magic actually. Because God wants us to have a clear, clear conscience. When you have unforgiveness, it doesn't hurt the other person, it hurts you. And therefore you lose your joy. Psalm 22, but you are holy and throne in the praises of Israel. He's holy and therefore we need to be holy. John 15, now how do we get into the presence? Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Hallelujah. For without me you can do nothing. These things have I spoken to you, that you may remain in, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. You want the joy of the Lord? Start being happy. What the Solomon inspired? Rejoice always. Rejoice always. No matter what you are going through right now, rejoice. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house. And you give them drink for the river of your pleasure. How many clothes? I can see all the excitement coming up. You know the prodigal son was one that said, I wish my father were dead so I can get the inheritance. That's what he literally said. I wish you were dead, but since you're not dead, give me whatever my portion is so that I could enjoy myself. And so the father gives him his portion and he leaves. And you know what happens? He goes into the sky, he eats the food of the pigs, he realizes that he's worse than the servants of his father and he returns. And when he returns, there's a great party. There's a party going on. They kill the fatted calf, they have a bride, they enjoy themselves. And the Bible says they are happy, they are full of the joy. And always, whenever you are experiencing joy, there's somebody that will come there and try to steal your joy. And you know who that is? The enemy in our lives. The elder brother was very angry here. He was very upset. Now, shouldn't he be happy that his brother had returned? Shouldn't he have forgiven his brother? Shouldn't he have joined the party? But no, he didn't. Listen, when the prodigal returned, there was a party. Now, I want you to learn to party. You, you, you should I want you to learn to party. As Christians, you think the only thing we must do is come into church, sing one or two choruses, listen to the message, and go home and read our Bible for the next seven days. God didn't create Eve for that. Come on, somebody. When God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, He gave them everything so that they would be content and so that they would be happy. Christians are walking away from religion because religion is not Jesus Christ. We need a relationship with Jesus. And what does Jesus want for you? He wants you to be full of the joy of the Lord. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to have a party. Listen, what's wrong with having a wonderful party? And for all the white people, you can make a nice roast and everything and want to eat the Indian curries, right? And all the Indian people, you are like to be like the white people, make all the roast and uh, the butternut and all that. Then I don't do Butternut, spinach, with cream. I, I want my curry and rice. I think I clean sheep and make it nice. Come on, Deborah. Huh? We must be full of the joy of the Lord. Come on, somebody. I want you to be happy. You enjoy your life the best way you choose. How? Have a party. Enjoy your life. If you are in the presence of God, I want to see you full of the joy of the Lord. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Listen, when the ark of the covenant returned, what did David do? He was so full of the joy of the Lord. His clothes came.
get up, he started to sing and dance and shout before the presence of God. Mikhail saw it and she was so unhappy because he was so happy. Listen, whenever you are full of the joy of the Lord, somebody is going to try to pull you down. Somebody is going to be unhappy. Do you know that every party, every function, there's always one relative or one friend that's sitting in one corner with a face as long as the east is from the west. Have you ever noticed that? But I learned something. It starts with IG. Ignore! Because we are having a party. Come on, Christians. Jesus wants you to have the joy in your being. Be full of the joy of the Lord. What does Jesus say? He doesn't say come into heaven. He says enter into the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Enter into the joy. You must be full of the joy of heaven this morning. Come on somebody, you're never going to leave you the same way you came in. If you do, then all of our time together has been wasted. But I know the Spirit of God is right here. And I know that hearts are being touched right now. I know that God is saying to you, for too long you've been in your state of depression. For too long you've been struggling. For too long you've not accessed my presence. This morning, as you stand, I want you to access the presence of an Almighty God. Why don't you pray for me? I'll raise a hallelujah, okay? I want you to access the presence of an Almighty God. Be full of the joy of heaven. Be full of the glory of God. Listen, I go through a lot in my life. I go through so much. But I tell you what, on a Sunday morning, I don't know where it comes from, where the strength comes from. I don't know where, sometimes even the guts comes from. But one thing I can tell you, that I will never give up my Jesus for anything in this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to say to you that you don't know how much we pray for you. We pray for you. We love you very dearly. We pray for you. Those of you that are here, you know how many of you we've counseled, how many of you we've called, how many of you we've prayed for over the phone. But now we thank the Lord that you are here, that we can worship together. We're going to listen to this chorus and thereafter, I know you really are really longing to give that offering. I just see how your pockets are bulging with all the eight months of money that you got. It's so heavy, some of you cannot even stand. I can see that. I'm joking. At the exit, we're going to exit and you can drop in your offering at the exit to avoid contact with the ushers. And so if you want to put in an offering, you're not asking for it, that's to you, left to you. The baskets will be at the exit. But before we do that, we want to worship God together, give Him all the praise and glory and honor, and pray for us, pray for the church, pray for my wife, myself, our families, pray for each other. It's all we've got. It's all we've got, really. That's all we've got, nothing else, to pray for each other. So nice to see our dear uh, Brother Alan here, also many, many years of serving the Lord. I'm so happy to see you. God bless you and your family. It's not been easy for you also. I know what you've been through. Just know that we are all praying. And when you pray in church, pray for everybody in the church. Pray for each other. Let's just worship the Lord together. Thank you, Lord.
is that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And our prayer is that nothing touches us or comes nigh us. Read 2 Chronicles 7 13. First, God says He will send a pandemic, He will send pestilence upon the earth. 2 Chronicles 7 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal the land. Hallelujah. God is about to heal the land. Hallelujah. Immediately after the service, all the stewards are to please meet Sherwin and the, all the uh, praise and worship team together with the sound desk, together with um, the recording team, Joash, and all of you that are involved in that, and the lighting and all of that, we need to get all of that sorted out for next week. So will the worship team please come and meet us and Cynthia wants to just thank you. Uh, this is my microphone, so you don't. Yeah, a lot of meetings, so hold on, on. please go. You may be seated. Just one minute. Thank you. Were you blessed this morning? Wow. We felt like just singing and singing and singing. And you know what? I was standing here and I watched the passion with which you were singing. With all your hands raised. I think being away from church did us some good, eh? But God bless you. I just one or two announcements. Uh, don't forget your offering. But I'm going to say thank you very much to all of you that have been so faithful in your timing. Had you not been so faithful, we would not have been able to bless the poor during this uh, time. So many people were so dependent on the parcels that uh, we had given out, that we had to meet the needs of staff, the airports, the light, the water. Thank you so much. Thank you for your faithfulness. God sees your faithfulness and God knows your faithfulness. So, had you not, you know, uh, we thank God that Living Waters Church wasn't in need during this time of the pandemic. And that we say glory to God. There were those of you that gave over and above uh, your tithes, and I want to say thank you. And also, I just took it upon myself to say thank you to Pastor. You know, during this time, why we all, it was so comfortable for all of us to, I'm doing this for us as a presentation, okay? Uh, I just want to say, you know, why we all were so comfortable and we all were at home, just tuning out to the live streaming, but every week you waited upon the Lord. Sometimes you tell me on a Thursday, you know what, the Lord didn't give me a message. Sometimes you tell me, you say, you know what, if this is what the Lord taught you in your spirit. Sometimes you tell me, you know what, I have to change the message. I don't think God wants me to speak about this. And I want to say thank you, because I think those of us, uh, I mean, being the closest to you, I hope, there's someone else that is there. Being the closest to you, uh, I know the pain and the struggles, and to my children, they're giving such a difficult time. Thank you. You know, daddy, you don't need to open it. Daddy, this and daddy, that and daddy, this and daddy, that. But thank you to my children. Had it not been for your daddy, wouldn't be able so free to share God's word. And you know, you all know, within 10 years for the son, after 10 years, Jewish was born. What a gift you are, son, to daddy. Not to me, shy, but to daddy. Thank you for sitting with him every kilometer night, every Sunday morning, waking up early, you know, checking if everything's okay, buying Wi-Fi, then even asking his father for more money if our Wi-Fi is down. You don't know how he does it. Then he uses this laptop and uses that laptop and it wasn't easy for him to. So I say thank you to your son. And God bless you. I know the days you are going to be blessed here. And thank you to my sons and Lord, to my children, to my grandchildren for supporting us in ministry and thank you again to Pastor. I really appreciate you and what you do. I know the new waters appreciate you. Yes, they do love you more than me. So go home to you. Let's give you my hand. We'd like to sincerely thank Desmond to, uh, in, you know, assisting us. Desmond, Desmond, I do, Jessica, Desmond, where you? 
Okay, come to see that Desmond, you can come to the front. And all those that are assisting, please meet Desmond and Jessica on my left, right? So you come to the left of myself. And then the worship team will come to the front and show it you on the right. Okay, so by next week we're going to get everything sorted out. And uh, as you go out, you may drop your offering there. We thank the Lord. I really want to say thank you. Ravi, I think it's uh, really, really apt for me to say thank you to you. Thank you, Leon. You know, during this time of lockdown, uh, Ravi, Leon, and Errol, who's in Cape Town right now, distributed an average of 60 hampers every single month. Thank you. May God bless you and Rukashni and the family. Thank you, Leon. We also want to thank Andre. I know you don't like this, Andre, but Tasha and Andre will really value you. And won't you please stand? I know you don't like this, but you deserve this, yeah. Thank you sincerely, thank you. For the wonderful hampers that you gave, for the number of things, all those printing balls that you see around. We've got shields here in the church that have been given by them. They've done so much for the church. All those things there have all been done free of charge. And I know you don't like this, but may God bless you. And may God prosper you. And God be with you as you continue serving the Lord. God bless you. And also to Leon and Corinne and Michael, would you just please stand? They're also in graphic designing. They helped us come stand. Thank you for all the work that you've done for us. God bless you, and we're going to stand out and pronounce benediction again. If you don't mind, we're going to move out from that area. We decided to use only one entrance and exit so that we don't have a problem with uh, security. If we open all the doors, the security becomes a risk. So just please bear with us as we exit.